Hello everyone. So now we will move towards a fourth unit called as in loaders. So in this I made two part, loader part one and part two. First we will discuss about the content in the part one. But here in the uh, description I given entire part one as well as part two what it contains. So topics to be covered in this one is loader schemes, compile and go loaders, general loader scheme, absolute loader, relocating loader, direct linking loaders and other loader schemes we are going to be discussed. And this part two, design of and direct linking loader, specification of problem, object deck, card design, specification of data structures, format of databases, algorithm, with respect to direct linking loader will be learned in the part two that is in the next video so according to bangalore university blueprint two marks two questions will be asked five marks three questions will be asked sometimes two questions will be asked so that's why i written here 15 or 10 that is in section b as well as in the section d 15 mark one question that is divided into two question a b seven and eight marks totally 15 marks so total marks from this chapter is going to be asked as a questions with the 34 marks or else minimum 29 marks definite questions will be asked from this unit or chapter going to the next loader scheme part one we will discuss in this we are going to discuss about these things Compile and go loaders, general loader scheme, absolute loader, relocating loader, direct linking loaders, other loader schemes like binders, linking loader, overlay, and dynamic binding. So introduction. So before going to learn entire thing about loaders, we want to discuss about three things here. One is called loading, another one is called relocation, third one is called linking. Loading brings the object program into the memory for execution. Relocation, just it will modify the object program so that is can be loaded at any address different from the location originally specified. Loading is the process, it will bring object program into the memory for the execution relocation if any modification is required in the memory location that has been done with the help of relocation linking combined two or more separate object programs and supplies the information needed to allow reference between them that is nothing but some subroutines will be defined in the program and uh, during the execution all those has to bring together for the execution at that time the linking process will perform the linkage between the more than one subroutines to get executed so here this loading process will be considered as an absolute load and next here relocation will be considered as an the combination of this loading and relocation will be considered as a loader and the combination of loading relocation and linking will be called as a linking loader and see single this linking will be considered as a linger linker so the process of loading and relocation will be done by loader the loading will be done by absolute loader the linking loader will be done by the process of loading relocating and linking and the linking process will be done by linker loader loader is a program which accepts the object program that prepares these program for the execution by the computer and initiates the execution so program loader is one of the system program that is nothing but system software it is a component of the system software what it will do it will accept the object program deck and prepares the program for the execution to the computer that is nothing but for the compiler or assembler and that assembler or compiler will take uh, it for initiation of the execution so here the, there are example object program a object program b and these two programs will be loaded to whom loader loader with the help of linking it will load all these programs both the programs into the main memory 
A and B. Now these will get a two memory. Now these two memories are reserved with the two programs called A and B. Once it is stored in the main memory, we know that main memory is the decision maker. It will execute A and B program according to the sequence and executions will be taking place in the form of an execution. Basic loader functions, the most fundamental functions of a loader is bringing an object program into memory and uh, starting its execution is called as a basic function. And along with that, it has four functions, allocation, linking, reallocation, and uh, loading. Allocation is nothing but allocate space in memory for the program. Allocation function will perform a space for the program in the memory. Linking resolves symbolic reference between object decks. So there are the symbolic references. Those will be referred with the help of linking. Adjust all address depends dependent locations such as address constants to correspond to the all located space. For example, if overlapping is happening in the memory, at that time the program has to be reallocated in the respective memory, which is occupied with a fully complete memory, how much it is required. For example, if I require 10 kilobytes of a memory for my program storage in the memory, but it is not sufficient for me. So at that time, after 8 KB of memory, in the 9th KB of a memory, there may be a different program. If I store that one, then it will be overlapping. To avoid such kind of an overlapping, the relocation, that is adjustment of the address, depends on the location will be happening in the main memory. That is taken care by relocation function. Loading physically places the machine instruction and the data into memory. It will place physically all machine instructions and data, whichever it is defined in the program to the memory for the execution purpose loader schemes are defined like this based on the functions which we discussed in the last presentation that is allocation linking relocation and loading here the entire loaders are divided into different types one is called compile and go loader general loader scheme relocating loader direct linking loader dynamic loading and dynamic linking these we will study one by one. The next one, compile and go loader. It is a relatively easy to implement. The assembler simply places the code into the core and the loader consists of one instruction that transfers to the starting instruction of the newly assembled program is called compile and go or assemble and go. Once the program is stored into a assembler, it will place the code into the core because it has to load after conversion of a mnemonic code into a machine code it has to be loaded into the memory for the execution purpose so at that time the entire core program will be directly loaded from assembler to the main memory at that time the program whichever it is performing the transmission transferring the data from compiler so our assembler to the memory is called as an compile and go compiled data will be directly moving towards the memory with the help of loader so such process is called as a compile and go or assemble or and go loader or loaders or linkers so this is the example source program is here compile and go translator is here that is nothing but it will convert all mnemonic code in terms of an machine readable form and with the help of uh, loader it will load into the program that is nothing but memory this assembler will control the program which is loaded in terms of an object code why because once it is loaded into the memory memory will be reading only the object code it won't read any source code whichever it is written in terms of an mnemonic code so it is going to control and this process is called as an compile and go because this program is a source written in mnemonic and once it is storing into the memory it will be converted into object code and such kind of a process is called as an compile and go or assemble and go loader the advantage of this one it is relatively easy to implement it's very easy it is simple and easy to follow the compile and go 
loader disadvantage a portion of the memory is wasted many times the portion of the memory is wasted because it won't bother about the free space available in the memory it is necessary to retranslate the program every time every time we need to retranslate the program this is the drawback in the go compiler and go lo loader it is very difficult to handle multiple segments especially when they are in different language so it is very difficult to produce modular programs it is difficult for handling multiple segments for example if it is a one program there is no problem if multiple programs are occurred during the program execution in with the different languages then it is too much difficult for this compile and go to manage with the loading process so that's why it's difficult for managing multiple program segments by using different programming languages general loader scheme in this loader accepts the assembled machine instructions data and other information object format and places machine instructions and data in core in an executable format what it will do it will accept all assembled machine instructions data and other informations about the object format and it places into the machine instruction and the data in core in an executable format there is a format of the data with respect to the data format all the data and instructions will be placed in the machine structure how it is required by the 16 bit machine or uh, structure that is nothing but instruction format that will be directly loaded the loader is a smaller than assembler so more memory is available to the user it is very smaller as compared to assembler which one loader is a smaller as compared to assembler so more memory is available for the user now we don't need to translate the program once it the assemble uh, once assembled code is uh, loading through the loader there is no need to translate the program why because the loader will take the code which is already translated and made in the form of an object code if all the source program translators produces compatible object programs and use compatible linkage conventions it is possible to write subroutine in different languages if all source program translators produces compatible object programs then it can be compatible for the linkage conversations why because once all the codes are loaded into the loader it has to get the link between one subroutine to another subroutine to perform the execution of the program so if it is defined in two different programming language also it is uh, it is good uh, for the general loader scheme to take care of each and every program whatever it is needed for the execution process from assembler compiler to the main memory advantages of this one the loader is assumed to be a smaller than the assembler so that more memory is available for the user object program is available on the object desk reassembly is no longer necessary to run the program at a later date why because already it is it is once it is converted it will be loaded and later it will be discarded it is possible to write subroutines in several different languages since all source program translators produce compatible object program type formats in machine language to be produced by the loader because if i am using c programming if somebody is using c plus plus if somebody is using microprocessor language all these are the different programming languages with respect to that the compiler require different um, machine instructions to convert all those into a respective object code so this is little bit difficult for the machine to load all the object into its deck deck is nothing but a memory in general loading scheme has four functions by allocation it is by the programmer linking again it is by the programmer it will happen relocation by the assembler in, in internally loading by the loader the, these perform uh, these will perform with the uh, three di four different functions whichever it is defined by the loader absolute loaders in this scheme the object program is placed in secondary devices primary devices are nothing but main memory secondary devices are nothing but secondary memory devices 
the loader only accepts the machine language text and places into core at the location prescribed by the assembler so once it is stored in the secondary storage devices loader only will bring the all machine level language text and places into its uh, core that location prescribed by the assembler not by the user what he or she written in the source because every machine level language will be written with respect to the instructions code along with the number line number that specifies how many bytes of an memory is required depends on that line number will be specified disadvantage is the that the programmer must specify the load address in the program just now i said the location of the program instruction depends on the instruction memory will be located so depends on the, that uh, the address is going to be changed also if there are multiple subroutines the programmer must remember the address of each and use that in order in other subroutine to perform subroutine linkage each and every time the user has to be keep track of the address where those subroutines multiple subroutines are stored so this is a little bit difficult for the user to remember more than one subroutine if they are used if it is few subroutines defined by the user then it is easy to remember if more than few then it is difficult for the user to remember the address where the subroutine begins and where it is ended and what is the address specification for each and every instruction defined in the subroutines are a little bit difficult the main program this is the one subroutine called as in square root that is nothing but it is like a function if you consider c programming the main programming is program is calling one sub function that is called as a square root function it is going to perform a function called as an finding square root of some number and both has to be merged because this is calling this function so this is called as a called for calling function and this is called as a called function until unless this execution is not happened with this program then it is not going to produce any answer so both will be taking care by absolute loader and those will be directly loaded into the memory and main and square root will be occupying their respective place in the memory without overlapping each other and once it is loaded into the memory the execution is going to be taken care by memory itself advantages of absolute loaders absolute loaders are simple to implement this scheme makes more core available to the user since the assembler is not uh in memory at load time assembler is not going to use here for the loading process uh, during the loading process of the data from main main uh, secondary device to uh, main memory so that's why here more memory is available disadvantage the need for programmer to specify the actual address at which it will be loaded into memory this is difficult for the programmer to specify where actually that program is stored because it's not having a single or one or two programs it is uh, more than 10 10 or hundreds of a subroutines then it is difficult for the user to remember the address the need for programmer to specify the actual address at which it will be loaded into the memory the same thing where it is actually it is loaded into the memory that address cannot be remembered by the user why because it's not a single program it is a multiple subroutine it is included with a multiple subroutine so it is difficult for the user to remember all those design of an absolute loader absolute loader performs the task of allocation relocation and linking absolute loader perform it will perform three operations one is called as an allocation of the memory relocation of the memory and linking with the memories therefore it is only necessary for the loader to read cards of the object deck and move the text on the cards into the absolute location specified by the assembler because of this reason allocation reallocation and linking the absolute loader uh, necessary for the loader to read all the cards from the object deck that is nothing but where the entire object code is stored and move to the text cards that is nothing but it has to move towards the text card which it is considered as an absolute location specified for by the assembler and through that it is going to store those into the memory there are two types of information that the object communicate from the assembler to the loader 
there are two types of in communication from the assembler to the loader how it has to carry the data from it towards the memory is defined it must convey the machine instruction that the assembler has created along with the assigned core locations uh, it must convey machine instructions that assembler has created along with the assigned core locations that has to be uh, mentioned in the main memory it must convey the entry point of the program which is where the loader is to transfer control when all instructions are loaded so it has to mention the entry point of the program once all the uh, instruction is transferred to the load low memory through the loader that has to be mentioned as a entry point to the assembler next here there are two formats for uh, these des uh, design of an absolute loader these two uh, cards format will be used one is called a text card another one is called a transfer card text card for the information will consist of two things one is called card column another one is called content the first card will be specifying always card type that is for text card identifier it will be always maintained with the value zero to the card number count of number of bytes of information on the card will be specified one byte per column will be specified as a number of column three to five address at which data on the card is to be put this will be identifying six to seven card number will specify it is a empty used for validity checking eight to 72 column instructions and data to be loaded which day instructions and data to be loaded to the memory will be specified 73 to 80 card sequence number from which it has to access the constant value for the evaluation that is defined transfer card to hold entry point to program is again defined by two things card num column number as well as the content card one consists of card type equals to one previously it is zero now it is one if it is zero we should consider it as a text card if it is one we should consider it as transfer card identifier two count equals to zero there is no number of byte information has to be put it on the card because it is transferring one it is not a content which is which it is going to be stored the instruction three to five address of entry point just now we discussed here how the loader has to be mentioned the entry point for the assembler that is here so next three to five address of the entry point six to seventy two empty because at six to seventy two itself is used for the data instruction here it is not required seven three seven three seventy three to eighty card sequence number whichever you used here the same thing has to be used here to access the constant value for the evaluation this is one thing, one example loading of an absolute program the object program contains h record t record and e record h stands for header t stands for text e stands for end head that how we are going to be implement in the object code you can get here one example still uh, still in uh, assembly level language or high level programming language we are not able to see how that object code looks so here it is the sample it will be considered as an object code object code always looks like this these are the conversions of machine code or mnemonic code and each and every line will be followed by one of one of these texts and h will be always considered as an header text so that's why it will be specified in the first line of the object code with the first character and next other instructions will be specified with the character called as an t and next last if the conversation of mnemonic to the machine code is performed then it has to be end because machine can't understand uh, where it is begin and where it is ended the instruction conversion so this is head h indicates it is the beginning of the text or instruction conversion and e indicates it is the end of the conversion so this is the sample of object program with the three record header record text record and end record
next loading of an absolute program into the memory these are the memory addresses and memory addresses may be in hexadecimal also and the same program which it is there in the previously what it is implemented in terms of an object code the same thing is loaded here with this content this is the content converted in terms of an object program and that object program is directly loaded into the memory and that memory once it is load uh, once it is converted into a object code from the assembler or compiler the loader will load all those data into main memory this is the content xxx indicates it is empty there is no data and these are the data and this data is from this object code whatever we got the same thing is loaded here okay next relocating loaders loaders that allow for program relocation are called relocating or relative loaders loaders which allows us to relocate the program for example i located here my pro program i don't want to keep here because it's not enough space for my program then i can relocate it here so i can relocate it here so that is nothing but once if the loader is allowing me to relocate anywhere my program is called as a relocating loader or relative loaders two methods for specifying the re relocation as a part of the object program one is called a transfer vector or modification records um, in that suitable for a small number of relocation required for example here i require 400 kb but here only the 339 kb memory is free 1 kb memory i require then it is very small that i can use with the some other memory locations i like this i can do when relative or immediate addressing modes are extensively used at that time also i can use transfer vector relocation bits suitable for a large number of relocations required for example i require 1000 kb of memory but it is providing only a 500 kb of memory i require for uh, i require 500 more kb of memory to fulfill uh, 1000 kb of memory memories of a program to be loaded into the main memory it is not possible at that time relocation bit process will be used to store uh, uh, thousand kb of program or process when only direct addressing mode can be used in a machine with a fixed instruction format so anyhow we know there are two types of an addressing mode direct and indirect addressing mode if the instruction defined by the direct addressing mode then only we can specify a second method that is called as an relocation bit method why because it require large memory it is not require smaller piece of in memory see here example in the main memory already os is occupies the memory for 0 to 200 kb now the object model om has to be placed over the os from 2 kb to 400 kb that is nothing but again it require 2 kb but om has been placed from 0 to 200 kb now there is an overlap if i keep this one here then obviously it is also required 200 kb it will become overlap this leads to a problem and confusion for the memory which one it has to execute so the model om has to be addressed from 200 kb to 400 uh, so the starting address of an om is 0 and end is 200 then this is called re relocation overlapping we can avoid instead of keeping os here we will keep it will start from 200 and this om will start from zero and the overlapping we can avoid and such kind of a process is called as an relocating loader or relative loader next advantages and disadvantages of this relocating loader relocation bits are used to solve the problem of relocation transfer vector is used to solve the problem of linking and program length in in into uh, so in into solve allocation that is nothing but uh, in, this is length information to solve allocation that is nothing but once the bit is bit 
are used it will solve the problem of relocation if transfer vector is used it will solve the problem of linking and program length information to the solve allocation that is nothing but if it is a smaller one then it is problem for us to transfer bit bit in the bit directly we can avoid the overlapping and we can place the program for the execution disadvantage not suited for loading external data internal data can be stored not external data uh, can be stored transfer vector increases the size always transfer vector increases size so that's why it is not possible next does not facilitate access to data segment that can be shared the shared data can, segments cannot be facilitated for the access it is necessary to allocate relocate link and load all the subroutines each time in order to execute a program each and every time whenever we wanted to execute a program it has to allocate reallocate link and load all the subroutines for the execution direct linking loader it is a general relocatable loader and it uh, perhaps the most popular popular loading scheme presently used presently in our computers and all they are using a structure called as a direct linking loader scheme only they are using it has advantage of allowing the programmer multiple procedure segments and multiple data segments for example if you are using a windows operating system like a multi operating users multi operating system like windows or linux or unix at that time multiple users can access the same processor or same memory for the different segment that is nothing but different model executions at that time it has to provide a multiple processor pro, procedure segments as well as the data segment for the conversion either it may be in assembly or it may be in higher level programming that it has to allow the different user for the different conversions with respect to their program so that's why direct linking loader will be used presently it's a pro popular scheme uh, for loading other segments provides flexible inter segment inter segment referencing and accessing ability while translation of the programs uh, whichever the segments defined for um, the present program that can be shared accessed provided providing flexible to access all those for the other program translation for example if one person defined a some function subroutine for their program but the same will be utilized by the other person for their utilization then they can use that one this flexibility is there uh, in the direct linking loader the assembler the assemble must give the loader the following information with each procedure or data segment the assembler must give the loader the following information with each procedure to data segment the length of the object code segment they have to specify a list of the external symbol has to be defined and a list of external symbol has to be used by the segment has to be defined information about the address constants they have to specify the machine code translation of the source program has to be specified the assembler produces four types of cards in the object deck esd txt rld end card external symbol dictionary it contains information about all symbols that are defined in the program but referred somewhere that is nothing but as in the assembly level programming language some symbols we are going to be defined those will be stored in the dictionary called as an external symbol dictionary the text cards it contains the actual object code translated version of the source program that is nothing but the assembly level code whichever it is converted into machine code called as an object code will be stored in the text cards just now we saw t t t t h is specifying a header t t t t h line will be specified as a converted code that is called as a text card the relocation and linking directory contains information about locations in the program whose contents depends on the address at which the program is placed where the program is placed at the address is stored in the rld 
and the end card indicates the end of the object deck and specifies the starting address of the execution so it shows here the end of the object code now it can take it for the take it for the execution process that will be indicated by end card other loader schemes like binders linking loaders overlays and dynamic linking and dynamic loader by the disadvantage of direct linking loader problem solved by dividing the loading process into two separate load programs a binder and a model loader what are those disadvantages existed in the direct linking loader allocate reallocate link all these has to done for each and every process of an program execution so that is the disadvantage of direct linking lo loader so to overcome that here they used two different separate uh, they implemented two process in separate program a binder and a model loader binders what do you mean by binders it is a program similar to direct linking loader the same it is also a program like direct linking loader in binding subroutines together the subroutines are more than one to bind each other together we should keep so binding each subroutine together this type of an process this type of an the program will be used that program is called as a binder binder is a loader it will bind all subroutine together but rather than placing the relocated and linked text directory into memory once it is binded all subroutines together it won't relocate and link text will be directly in, uh, implemented into the memory or stored into the text directory into a memory it outputs the text as a file or card deck entire process will be whichever it is merged bind those will be considered as a text file or a card deck that will be placed into the memory this output file is in a format ready to be loaded and and typically called a load model this model is called as a load model it is ready for the execution there is no need to format anything already it will be there in the formatted form to be ready for the execution directly it will be loaded so this process is called as a load model the binder essentially performs the functions of allocations reallocations and linking the model loader loader for the function of loading so whichever the functions are done by the direct linking loader the same thing will be done allocation reallocation and linking will be done with the binder linking loader generally a program consists of several procedures the compiler translates all the procedures separately independently into distinct objects that is not object models because there may be different several procedures several functions those will be defined and those will be separately uh, translated and implemented and uh, independently those are stored in a different object model these are the most of the ta time stored in the secondary memory not in the primary memory all these will be stored in the secondary memory in order to execute the object models these must be linked together and loaded into the main memory those will be stored in the secondary memory in order to execute all together those will be combined linking of various object models are done by the linker the linkers function is to collect the various object models and link them together called as executable binary program so that i will explain you here there are n number of programs and those will be called as an sub the source programs all together will be combined and sent to the compiler and once the compiler is compiled assembler or compiler will compile the again those will be kept in a different model object model this is program this is object model one two three and with the help of linker all together will be linked with the help of library and those will be sent for the execution purpose so the loader can be linking loader if it is a link if it is linking the necessary library functions and symbolic references so those will be stored in the library 
those references it will get it by the linker all together are going to be linked the receive these receives a set of object program as input set of object program as a input here be linked together it eliminates the disadvantage of other loading scheme it also takes care of relocation it won't provide any elimination of the program it will take care of the relocation of the program also by this linker overlays an overlay is a part of a program which has the same loading origin as some other parts of the program overlays are used to reduce the main memory requirement of a program sometimes the main memory requires more more uh, memory allocations for the program that will be avoided by the overlays overlay structured program it is a overlay is a structured program a program containing overlays as an overlay structured program such as a program consists of if it is called overlays structured program then it should consist a permanently resident position called root it should be consisting of root and set of overlays that is nothing but set of childs it has to consist execution of an overlay structured program proceeds as follows to start with the root is loaded into the memory and given control for the execution other overlays are loaded as and when needed the loading of an overlay overrides a previous previously loaded overlay with the same load origin this reduces the memory requirement of a program so the same old whichever i read there that i will explain here so what is that this is the example in this example so totally five models are defined five programs are defined here a is executing along with the b b a is executing along with b d e so now this overlay structure has to consist of one root so here the structure consists of one root with the with the kilobytes called as in 20 with the same a is invoking with the b d e so that's why here the child for a is b d and e along with that b is not invoking b is invoking with c and e and now i should consider c and e are the child for the b next i will consider d d is again invoking with e so now d is having a child called as an e so now i can say b e d are the child for a c and e are the child for b and e is a child for d so like this but here once i define the old structure for this e it is not once again defined already it is defined the same thing can be accessed by b the same thing can be accessed by d because once if it is accessing by the a already it is defined and stored in the memory there is no need to define so that's why it will reduce the memory because here the e required three times it has to be declared but defined but it is defined once only the once defined e module or e program will be accessed by b accessed by a and accessed by d next dynamic loading in each of the loader scheme we have assumed that all of the subroutines needed are loaded into memory every every time all instructions will subroutines instructions will be loaded into memory because until unless it will not stored into the memory it is not going to be executed at the same time if the total amount of memory required by all these subroutine exceeds the amount of available then there is a trouble then we use dynamic loading scheme to solve this problem if all together wanted to load into the main memory for the execution if the memory required by the subroutine is exceeds more than the available memory existed in the main memory then the trouble will access or trouble will arise to at that time such kind of a dynamic loading will be used to overcome and solve such kind of a problem called as exceeding memory 
problem. Dynamic loading is also called as a load on call. That is nothing but on call, it will provide external memory. So that's why it is called as a load on call. This is done to save memory because to save the memory, whichever it is there in the physical memory has to be used by some other process for the execution. So that's why such kind of an such kind of an loading scheme will be used. If all the subroutines are loaded simultaneously, a lot of space is taken up, but only one is used at a time. So here only the required subroutines are loaded. Required subroutines are loaded. Other unrequired subroutines are not loaded during the execution because simultaneously all cannot be loaded into the memory for the execution. To identify the call sequence, we use the data structure called overlay structure. Just now we saw in the previous presentation. It defines mutually exclusive subroutine. So only the ones needed are loaded and a lot of memory is saved. All together will not be stored into the memory. Depends on the overlay structure. Each and every subroutine will be loaded and uh, it will safeguard the memory also and it will take the sequence of the pro program execution or problem execution or subroutine execution in order for the overlay to work. It is necessary for the model loader to load the various subroutines as they are needed. And instead of loading all together, it will load needed, uh, needed subroutine to the main memory for processing it into execution process. Next, dynamic linking. Dynamic linking is a mechanism by which loading and linking external references are postponed until execution time. For example, if I wanted to perform a execution during that loading and linking external references, not internal references, external references I wanted to postpone. That is, the assembler produce procedure pro produces text binding and relocation information from a source language to deck from source language to the deck whichever the information it has to be produced in terms of a text binding and relocation information has to be postponed the loader loads only the main program it won't load anything an advantage here is that no overhead is in, incurred unless the procedure to be called or referred is actually used so only main program is loaded into the memory there is no subroutine call there is no binding there is no relocation information then there is no execution will perform until unless the called or referenced is actually used by the main program further advantage is that the system can be dynamically reconfigured that is nothing but sometimes it will wait if it is not produced by the user or by the programmer automatically dynamically it is going to be reconfigured and it will link with a text and it will make a binding and it will perform the relocation for the information whichever it is stored whichever it wanted to store to the memory for the execution purpose the major drawback of using this type of end loading scheme is the complexity incurred due to the fact that, that we have postponed most of the binding process until execution time until execution time you postponed the some some of the most incurred facts so that's why it is difficult for for this type of end scheme to evaluate the process called as an execution of the program why because until unless it can't link it can't bind with the data so it is not able to execute why because each and every time simply we are postponing 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 the process uh, process of binding relocation and linking then how it is going to be executed the program which it is already stored in the main memory if only main memory is in the main memory program is there main program is there other subroutines are not there in the main memory for the linking or load loading purpose then obviously there is no execution until unless it won't get this is the major drawback of dynamic linking the next continuation how the designing of a dynamic linking will be happen and how it is going to be performed with the different tasks that we will see in the next video 
so thank you for listening go through with this one Re uh, read once if you found any queries you feel free to call me back thank you see you in the next video